Hey, what's up guys? Dan Carr here from shuttermuse.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to watermark your images using Adobe Lightroom Classic. And in this video, I'm going to be using a logo that was created for me by a company called Photo Logo. Now these guys create hand-drawn logos for photographers, and I've actually reviewed my whole experience of using this company to get a logo created, and you'll find that review on the Shuttermuse website. There's a link in the description beneath this video. So if you're curious about this logo that you see and you want to get something similar for yourself, click the link in the description, head on over, check it out. I think you'll love it. Okay, let's get to work in Lightroom. Now Lightroom Classic actually has one of the very best ways to organize your watermarks and apply them to images during an export. You can create lots of different watermarks and use them in lots of different ways when you send these images out of your catalog. So it's kind of a two-part process. You start with building lots of watermarks and then you can apply them to different export presets. So let's start up in the top left hand corner. We'll go to Lightroom, we'll go to Edit Watermarks and this opens up the watermark editing dialog. This defaults to your name with the copyright symbol. It's really boring. We want to make something looking much better than this. So we're going to use that photo logo that I talked about before. So the first thing you do is come up to the top here where it says text and graphic. We're going to choose graphic here and that pops up your little file window to choose the image that you want. So in this case, let's choose my white signature logo here. And once that's loaded in, you'll see at the moment it's down in the bottom left hand corner here. So we can choose the positioning of this watermark by this anchor section here. We can put it in the middle, we can put it at the bottom, we can put it in any one of these different places. I'm going to put one down the bottom here like this. Now your next choice is how big you want this to be. So for most people, I think you're going to choose this proportional setting here and you're actually going to be able to adjust the size using this slider. Now with the proportional setting selected, your logo, your watermark will always be proportionally the same size as it is on this image here. So if you load up a much, much bigger image than this one, then this logo, this watermark will still take up the same proportion of the image if you have the proportional option selected. So no matter how big the image is, it will be proportionally the same size. It's kind of self-explanatory. Now the other options you have are fit, which just puts it as big as you can on the screen without actually chopping off any of the edges of your logo. Or you have fill, which actually fills the entire thing. Now it will probably crop some of the edges off. Okay, so again, most people are probably going to choose proportional, uh, but you might choose fit if you were doing something, for example, um, like sending out a print preview to a client and you wanted to give them the full size image so they could inspect it but you didn't want them to be able to easily crop out the watermark. So if you had a small watermark like this uh, which you might use typically on social media or something like that you know somebody could uh, paint this out, they could use Photoshop to get rid of this, they could crop it off the bottom. That's not really what you want if you're sending someone a higher resolution file. So that might be an instance where you want to put something bigger. Uh, you might anchor it in the center like this, and you might just make it uh, pretty see-through like this by lowering the opacity on this opacity slider and popping it in the middle like that. So a client could potentially view a much higher resolution image, but they would have a really hard time to Photoshop out the watermark in this instance. So that's just a couple ways that you could use it. Anyway, let's put this back. Uh, let's go with proportional. Let's put this down the bottom here. The next thing you have are these inset sliders. Uh, whether or not you have the horizontal or vertical ones available to you will depend on which of these anchor points you're using. So when you're at the bottom here, you only have the vertical one uh, because obviously you don't want left and right, which would be the horizontal one because then it wouldn't be in the middle, which is the one you've chosen. So we're gonna go vertical. We're gonna offset it slightly like this. I'm gonna change the opacity to 80. That's uh, kind of a number that I usually like to use uh, on here. Let's there we go, 80. Um, and to me, that looks pretty good. So we could also rotate the file if you needed to. Uh, but in this case, we brought in the file uh, in the correct format and the correct orientation. So no need to worry about that. And then once you've created a watermark that you think is going to be useful for now and for later, you come up to the top here and you choose Save Current Settings as New Preset. So in this case, what we would do uh, it would say, some, give it some kind of a description thing. So maybe I would say social logo and I would put 80 because in this case uh, I have an opacity of 80 and I know that from past experience I'll often create lots of different presets 
for different opacities uh, and then you kind of get to know eventually which ones are going to work for which kinds of images now if I open up this menu again you can actually see that I have a few created already I have uh, Dan Carr Photography DCP SIG stands for signature white central and 40 percent 60 percent all of this is relating to the opacity uh, I have ones for shutter muse as well so this is the great thing about uh, Adobe Lightroom Classic is that you can build all these different watermarks and store them uh, really, really quickly as presets. And then we'll apply those to different kinds of export presets as well. So we don't want to go with these boring text things like this. There's no need for that. It's super easy to get uh, a really nice looking logo created by the guys from Photo Logo. You know, it's really, really cheap. It's, it's under $40 to get something made like this so it's a it's a really huge difference in professionalism I think from going you know this basic text thing uh, over to this nice looking logo so we're gonna build a few of those as I've done and store them as presets and then we just have to click done and we'll move on to the next section and look at exporting these actually before we move on there's something really important I need to mention when we created those watermarks using that signature logo those watermarks are tied to the position of that file on your computer so if you move those files on your computer to a different location it will break the watermarks it's kind of annoying I wish that they imported those files into Lightroom and stored them within the preset but Lightroom does not do that so it's really important when you're using those signature files those logo files that you put them in a folder somewhere and label that folder watermark do not move exclamation point the only reason I'm telling you this is that I've fallen foul of this many times where I've shuffled things around, I've reorganized all my graphic assets in my photos folder or something like that, and all of a sudden I start exporting images from Lightroom and find that the watermarks are not being applied anymore, and that's because I've moved the files. So that's really important to remember. Like I said, I recommend you just copy your logo files, put them in a different folder somewhere that says do not move, and then never ever touch those ones again. Okay, so you've created some watermarks in the watermark editor just like I showed you and the next thing we need to do is apply them to some images during an export. So to get to the export dialog, the easiest way I think is to right click on an image and come down to export and then just go to the export option at the top of this. Now, once we've done that, we can choose a bunch of export options. Now this tutorial isn't about the export dialog. That's for another day and another tutorial. The main thing I want to show you here is down at the bottom here, watermarking. So if you're making an export preset or you're just doing a one-off export, then you can change all of these settings and then choose your watermark. Check the little box. And then here you have a list of all of those presets that we just created in the watermark editor. So in this example, uh, let's just say, I'm going to start with a preset that I've created on the left hand side here actually. So I have one here that says FB SIG Black uh, Central 80%. So if I do that, that means that this was a preset that I created uh, for putting images onto Facebook using my signature logo, a white logo centrally positioned with 80% opacity. So once I click that, those settings will all be appearing in this panel here and you can see that down here this watermark is selected the signature white central 80% so I could actually change that to 60% uh, or 40% now I could either create a new preset or I could update the previous preset here but the most important thing is that you have this flexibility to choose which watermark you're using now you can always just press the export button right here and that will just export the image into the file folder that you've chosen uh, in the settings up the top here. Or, like I said, you can choose add and create a new preset. Now, if you have created a preset and you already know that it has the correct settings, then you actually don't need to enter the dialog box at all for exporting. You can just right click, export, and find your preset in this list already. So I can just click that FB SIG white central 80% one. It's already going to know those settings and it's going to export that, put it into my folder here for putting images on Facebook. And if I look at that preview, there we see the signature applied with an 80% opacity just as I was expecting. All right, that's all there is to know about editing watermarks in Lightroom and applying them to your images during export. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.